सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन एंड डोमेन स्पेसिफिक एम्बेड सिस्टम सच एज वॉशिंग मशीन एंड इन द ऑटोमोटिव सेक्टर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद वन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट एम्बेड सिस्टम दैट इज कार एंड वी हैव सीन द डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन दैम ऑल्सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विद द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड द क्वालिटी एट्रीब्यूट्स सो दीज थिंग दीज आर द थिंग्स विच हैव कवर्ड टिल नाउ so those have not watched it please go and watch it it would be available in our channel itself so in this video we are going to discuss uh, further continue with the module that is a uh, computational models in embedded design okay so these are the some very important models okay uh, some uh, six models are there uh, in which the first uh, first three models are very very important ones okay one question from any of these three models will be appearing for the exam point of view okay so let us discuss now the commonly used computational models in embedded system designs are these six models okay that is first is data flow graph model that is dfg then we have controlled data flow graph model cdfg then we have state machine model sequential program model concurrent or communicating process model then the object oriented model okay so these last two models are not so important okay but the first four models are very important ones so one by one let us discuss each models in brief okay so, so now we have first is data flow graph model okay that is a dfg model the data flow graph dfg translates the data processing requirements into a data flow graph it is a data driven model in which the program execution is determined by the provided data okay so this data flow graph model is simply the translation of data that is whatever the input provided to any model okay that input would be enhanced and improvised using the data flow graph okay in in which the data would be highlighted in a particular way so as to work the embedded system in a particular manner okay so that's why we use this model called as data flow graph this model emphasizes on the data and operations on the data which performs which transforms the input data to the output data the embedded applications which are computational intensive and data driven are modeled using the dfg model so here we have dsp applications are the typical examples for this data flow graph model so this dfg data flow graph is a visual model in which the operation on the data process is represented using a block or a circle and data flow is represented using arrows okay in an inward arrow to the process or the circle represents the input data and the outward arrow from the process or the circle represents the output data in the dfg notation suppose one of the functions in our application contains the computational requirement so they have given here that is x equal to a plus b and y is equal to x minus c so for this these two functions let us try to draw the data flow graph model you see here this figure illustrates the implementation of a a data flow graph model for implementing these requirements so here we have x is equal to a plus b right so here you see here a and b are the inward arrows which is given to the data flow node okay and the outward output produced by this is they are getting added up so this is plus here then we have x that is the output produced so that would be x equal to a plus b then we have y is equal to x minus c so now here what we have x is already there and one more node would be coming that is c so these two would be getting subtracted in the data flow node minus so y the output produced here is y now so that would be y equal to x minus c so like this the data flow graph model works okay so this is not new to you guys so if you try to analyze the figure with the expression you would be coming to know okay so this is the data flow graph model so in this data flow graph model a data path is the data flow path from input to output okay which you have seen just now a data flow graph model dfg model is said to be a cyclic dfg model if it doesn't contain multiple values okay if it doesn't does not have any multiple values then it's then it is said to be a cyclic dfg model for example the input variable and multiple output values for a given set of inputs so feedback inputs output is fed back to inputs events etc are some examples for non acyclic inputs okay where the output is fed back to the input okay those things are the examples for non acyclic inputs a dfg model translates the program as a single sequential process execution okay so this point you need to be remembering it is a single sequential process execution we don't have any multiple events to be occurring in this data flow graph model so this was about dfg
So now let us discuss with the one more example that is control data flow graph model that is the CDFG model. Okay, and let's try to compare between this with the DFG and let us see what and all are the changes. In the DFG model, uh, the DFG model is a data driven model in which the execution is controlled by data and it does not involve any other control operations. Okay, so this is one thing which you have seen in the data flow graph. In the CDFG, it is used for modeling applications involving conditional program execution. So, so there would be here we have some conditions to be followed. Okay, based on that conditions only the program would be getting executed. Okay, if the if they are, if they are not following those conditions, then the program won't be getting executed. Okay, so this is the one difference between C, uh, DFG and CDFG. The CDFG models contain both data operations as well as control operations. Okay, here we have both operations. One is data as well as control. Whereas in data flow graph, we had only data operations. The CDFG uses data flow graph as element and conditional constructs as the decision makers. It contains both data flow nodes and decision nodes, whereas DFG contains only the data flow nodes. So for example, you consider the implementation of the CDFG for the following requirements. That is, we have one condition that is if, if a flag is equal to one, then only X, X would be equal to A plus B. But if flag is not equal to one, that is if flag equal to zero, then it would be Y is equal to A minus B. Okay. So we have here one condition to be followed in the data flow graph. Okay. That is one, that's only one change. That is here we have one condition that is if flag equal to one, then X equal to A plus B. Then if flag is not equal to one, then it would be Y equal to A minus B. Okay. So this requirement contains a decision making process. So the CDFG model for the same is given in the figure, which is shown down. So you see here, the control node is represented by a diamond block. Okay, so see here, this is the control node that is the uh, where from, from which the program would be getting executed. So here we have flag equal to one. So that is the main control node that is represented in the diamond block, which is the decision making element in the normal flowchart based design. The CDFG translates the requirement which is modeled to a concurrent process model. The decision on which process is to be executed is determined by the control node. Okay. So you see here, if flag equal to one, uh, what would be the condition to, to be followed? That would be equal to X equal to A plus B, right? So you see here, if flag is one, it would be given A and B are the inputs provided. It would be getting added and the output produced is X, right? So this is the data flow node. But if flag is not equal to one, then directly uh, it, it would be given to Y. Okay, again, the output would be A and B. A and B are the inputs and they are uh, getting subtracted. So the Y equal to A minus B. Okay. So this is one change in the CDFG where the condition would be coming into the picture. Okay. If the condition is satisfied, then only the output would be produced. Otherwise the output would be different. Okay. So a real world example for modeling the embedded application using CDFG is capturing and saving of the image. Okay. To a format set by the user in a digital still camera. Okay. So this is a real time example of this CDFG. The decision on which the format of the image is stored, formats like JPEG, TIFF, BMP, etc., is controlled by the camera settings conf configured by the user. Okay, so this is the these are some of the key differences between DFG as well as CDFG. So hope you understood this. So please note it down. Okay.